Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is George Kepte from the University of Miskolc, Hungary. This is my e-learning course on Equilibra of Materials, MSc level, and this is for my international students, basically, but I hope that many people will join all around the world. The subtitle of my course is The Basics of CALFOD and is the acronym for Calculation of Phase Diagrams. Phase diagrams are diagrams which contain in a very condensed form a huge information on materials equilibra. During this course we will learn how to calculate and how to interpret those so-called phase diagrams. But at this moment you can ask me why you, sir, are teaching us to this course at the University of Miskolc and my simple answer is that this is because at least at this university I created this course but of course I did it based on my experience gained on 11 international comfort conferences in which of course I made presentations and also sometimes I was able to take some of my students but I should say we were not only conference tourists, we also published six papers so far in the journal CALFOD, the latest one with my PhD students Adam Weig, and my oldest paper was uh, uh, gained uh, 84 independent citations so far. Well, of course, it could be worse, it could be better. It's important to mention that internationally speaking, I am far not the best CALFODian. There are many people all around the world who participated in more than 11 CALFOD conferences and published more than 6 CALFOD papers in the CALFOD journal. I presume that many of them record at the same time a similar course on CALFOD, but CALFOD is so complex that I am sure that each of us who are doing parallel recordings will actually do it in a very different way. Now let me take back the camera because I want to show to you one issue of this journal CALFOD. It was actually established by Larry Kaufman in 1973 and currently the editor is Z. Kui Liu from the Pennsylvania State University USA. I'm also proud to show to you uh, this award uh, explaining to you that in 2014 I published the best paper in journal CALFOD. Thank you so much for this recognition. And finally let me show to you the latest proceedings of the CALFOD conferences which was in Singapore last year. This CALFOD community organizes a conference every year. This year, 2020, we planned a conference for Sweden in May, but unfortunately this was cancelled for the situation caused by the coronavirus. Well, the situation is the same in Hungary, and actually I am forced to make this e-learning course because I cannot meet my international students. Okay, but now let me start. Subject number one is the structure of science and the place of material science and call for in all sciences. I think that the most important building block of all sciences is a language or languages. We need at least one coherent, well-organized language in which we clearly understand each other. In ideal world, this language is your mother tongue. Um, in my case, it is Hungarian, and unfortunately, my international students would not understand me in Hungarian. So that is why I am using my broken English. Once we have languages, or language, then we can have arts connected with languages. Also, we can have mathematics. Now, you might be surprised why I don't put mathematics as science number one. Let me explain. Suppose we write the best mathematical equation without a single human sentence explaining the symbols in that equation and the meaning of that equation after all. 
Now if you do so, then that beautiful mathematic equation will mean nothing. And that is why I think that languages and broken English is science number one. Mathematics is science number two. Once we have languages and mathematics, and then, and only then, we can build other branches of sciences, such as social sciences, life sciences, and natural sciences. And based on them, we can efficiently educate economists, medical doctors, and engineers. Additionally, we need a system of quantities and units, which is mostly needed for natural science and engineering, and also for life sciences and medical doctors. Well, I was careful enough to put the box of system of cons and units, touching only in a single point, the arrow showing towards social sciences, simply because I'm not sure they really use our quantities and units, but I let them do so. Summarizing, if you want to become the best international materials engineer or the best international metallurgical engineer, then the first thing what you should do, in addition to your mother tongue, learn to understand, to write and to speak the best possible broken English. In addition, you need to know as much as possible about mathematics. Then you need to know, know a reasonable amount of quantities and units. These I am going to teach to you in the next lecture. Then you need to know as much as possible about natural sciences. And only then it is reasonable to learn those many tricks, technologies, techniques by which you can treat the materials and you can become a real materials engineer or metallurgical engineer. Let me come back to this question of natural sciences. Of course, we cannot require that you know everything about natural sciences. So my advice is you should focus and your focus should be on material science. Material science was born around 1960 in the United States of America. Then it spread all over the world quite quickly while well, maybe not that quickly to ex-communist countries. To Hungary, particularly to Miskolc, material science and engineering education came in 1993, when the first course on material science and engineering was started by Professor Paul Barzi. Thank you so much, Paul. In year 2020, we have the Faculty of Material Science and Engineering, and this was created in year 2000 from the old Faculty of Metallurgy. Material science has three pillars. The first one is metallurgy, particularly chemical metallurgy, which is a science or art of making metals from ores. Then we have rolling and other techniques to shape solid metals, but we can also shape metals through the liquid state state using metal casting and obviously without combustion metallurgy would not exist. Even civilization would not exist without combustion or metallurgy at least above the level of the Stone Age. In history books we know that after the Stone Age we came to the Bronze Age and after the Bronze Age we came to the Iron Age. I am not sure if it's properly explained why this is because in the Stone Age you didn't need to melt anything. Now in the Bronze Age you need to know how to melt bronzes and in the Iron Age you need to, to know how to melt iron. Now the melting point of iron is much higher compared to the melting point of bronzes and that is why after the Stone Age first the Bronze Age came and only then the Iron Age. I should also mention that metallurgy is maybe not the scientific field, it is rather the collection of technologies how to make metals and alloys and how to shape them. 
obviously methodology is becoming more and more scientific at least at the universities and this is because new knowledge from physics and chemistry are taken into methodology that is why it is not surprising that the second pillar of material science is physics but we don't use all the branches of physics too much such as astronomy however we use some of atomic physics we use electron microscopes they are very helpful for us thank you for the physics to develop them you know engineers believe only what they see some of them don't believe even that XRD x-ray diffraction it is a method also developed by physics physics which is essential to understand the crystal structure of materials transport phenomena was also created by physics and mechanics is actually the basics of physics without which rolling and other technologies would probably not be possible and also mechanical thermodynamics is part of that the third pillar of material science is chemistry the autochemistry our knowledge about elements compounds and of course chemical bonds we need very much analytical chemistry to be able to measure the elemental composition of our materials and also to make sure if there are any molecules or any compound phases in our materials without electrochemistry even some of the elements would have not been discovered moreover today in metals and materials engineering we use lots of electrochemical techniques the same I can say about colloid chemistry kinetics is a science about the rate of chemical reactions now if you combine kinetics from chemistry with transport phenomena from physics you can get a new subdiscipline of material science about the rate of phase transformations and last but not least chemistry has a part called chemical thermodynamics which was actually developed from mechanical thermodynamics in 1870s by Gibbs I mark it by green because this is most similar to the subject of the current course called Equilibrium of Materials or the basics of Calford but let me make a difference between the two chemists are mostly interested in fluids liquids and vapors and that's why chemical thermodynamics in chemistry is mostly used to study equilibrium between liquids and vapors now in material science we are interested mostly in solids that is why in material science we study using Calford equilibrium between solids liquid liquids and vapors now you probably understand how many different crystalline phases we have with all different Gibbs energies so how, how, how much more difficult it is to study equilibrium between solids liquids and vapors compared to the original goal of chemistry studying equilibrium between liquids and vapors only when material science developed then quite soon after its establishment it was emerged it, it was merged with ceramics and glasses and polymers these for two reasons the first reason is that the laws of nature understood in material science are equally or at least similarly valid for metals and alloys for ceramics and glasses and for polymers moreover material science has three big disciplines three big large areas of different materials and these are metals and alloys behind metallurgy ceramics and glasses and polymers so this was the second reason but any of my colleagues from ceramics and polymers can ask me come on George why do you think metallurgy was the base of material science why not ceramics and polymers my reply is not because we are so clever no 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 this is only because the materials we study metals and alloys have so simple structure they are atomic compared to ionic structure of ceramics and the large 
molecules in polymers. Colford, as part of material science, came quite late in 1970s. This was not to wait until the 100th anniversary to celebrate the discovery of Gibbs. It was actually to wait the personal computers. And this is because calculations on equilibrium of materials can be done by hand, but it's very much not efficient. In this course I will teach my international students how to use Excel to calculate some simplified phase equilibria as basics of Colford. But everyone should understand that if you want to use Colford, the state-of-the-art state of level of Colford, you need a powerful computer and one of the best commercial Colford softwares. I have an additional good news and bad news at the same time, and this is that Colford is not ready. It is, ladies and gentlemen, under construction. By the way, material science is also not ready. It is also under construction, and actually Colford and material science, hand in hand, are being developed to go further and further. Now, we need new generations of young people, ladies and gentlemen, who are motivated to, to become Calfordians, young Calfordians, and later they will replace us old Calfordians to develop further the Calford method and, of course, material science. As I mentioned, material science first contained only three different classes of materials, metals and alloys, ceramics and glasses, and polymers. But then, as material science matured, it developed its own new classes of materials such as composite materials, forms, emulsions, metallic glasses, high entropy materials, biomaterials and nanomaterials, and thousands and ten thousands more. Saying the truth, it's even difficult to have a list of all of those new developments and especially to understand each of those new materials types in details. I can promise my international students only one thing. If you are really serious in studying material science and equilibrium materials, then you will have a much higher chance to understand efficiently those new types of materials compared to the case if you choose to neglect mostly these disciplines and you, you try to approach those new material classes using a simple empirical way. But it is now the end of my first lecture. I thank you so much for your attention. The only promise I can make, if I am still alive, I am coming back. Bye-bye.